Bonjour, comment allez-vous? Hello, how are you? Welcome back to my YouTube channel, Learn from Children Above. If you have already subscribed to my channel, press the bell icon to get the latest updates. In today's class, we are continuing with this textbook, Cours de langue et de civilisation française by J. Moget, volume 2, the millennium edition recommended for CBSE both students, French students of class 11th and 12th, uh, published by Google Publishers and Asha Tlivda. So till now we have completed the culture de civilization portion of chapter 1 to 30. Now we are doing the grammar and for grammar we have already covered for chapter number 1, 2 and 3. And in today's video we are going to cover the grammar portion of chapter number 4, La Sancarte, the village, the fonts. Okay, so the culture de civilization of this chapter has already been covered on my channel. All the videos up to page uh, up to chapter number 17 are present in the playlist titled G Moji Class 11th CBSC. The link to the playlist is there in the description box below. You can visit the playlist in case you haven't uh, watched the other videos. Okay. So if you have the textbook, you can open page number 8. La son cathedra, grammar, first thing, la plus que parfait et la futur anterior, revision uh, volume A. And then page number is given. Okay. So, uh, you all must be knowing that this is the volume 2. There is a volume 1 as well, which has a lot of grammar and vocabulary topics. It's not there for 11 and 12. For 11 and 12, we have the volume 2 only. So, in volume 1, it is telling to revise Pluska Parfait et Futur Anterior. So, let's just quickly uh, recap what is it all about. Pluska Parfait uh, or uh, plus parfait, you, uh, there are different different terms used for this tense. It's used for the future action. So say there are two actions in future, the one which is preceding the other action, for that we are using futur anterior. In other words, sorry, yeah, in futur anterior. I guess I messed up with the definitions. I uh, started with plus parfait, ended up with futur anterior. Let's do it. Let me write it, okay? That would be more easier. First, we are discussing futur anterior. Present, future, event 1, event 2. Event 1 taking place before, this will be using futur anterior. Okay, this one futur sample usually. Plus que parfait or plus parfait. Rather, present will be here. Event 1, event 2. Okay. This one is preceding the other one, fine, here, this event will be preceding the other one, right, first this event took place. So, for the event preceding, in, uh, preceding the other event in the past, for that you are using plus capacity. Okay, here, uh, the event in future preceding the other event, we are using Futu anterior. And in plus capacity, the event preceding other event in the past. Okay, for that you are using plus capacity. Talking about both uh, the tenses, how they get formed. So it's very easy. Subject plus the auxiliary verb for futur anterior. Auxiliary verb et al avoir is in futur sample conjugation. And for plus capacity, the auxiliary verb et al avoir are in empalfe conjugation followed by the past participle of the verb and subject verb agreement in case required. Okay, so this was the revision that was required. Uh, up to the school curriculum, what we know uh, about the, the uh, application of these two is, simply in Mate uh, Onton Convenable, we get a question. There are four words that indicate either to use futur anterior or the plus capacity, we have losca, deca, ositoca and co. So if you have these four words and the other blank is having passe composé or m parfait, you are going for plus capacity. And in case the, you have any of these four words along with futur, ante, a, a futur sample or maybe futur proche or something like that, some future tense in the other blank, you are going for futur anterior then. Okay. So they have given an example. Pierre qui avait travaillé tard hier a dormi longtemps ce matin. Pierre who worked yesterday hard slept long time this morning. So he worked hard. This event took place before. Hence we are using plus capacity. 
Dava kotu orata wa ye tuta harapozera. So uh, tomorrow when you will be working, you take rest. So you will be you will take rest. So uh, taking rest is taking place after, right? So we are using futu sample for that. But I'll uh, you will be working first. So for that we are using futu Ontario. Okay. So I hope the tenses are clear. In both the tenses are clear, or uh, if it was already clear, it must have got revised for you, right? <coughs> This was simple active uh, conjugation and stuff, right? This was very easy. Now, let's uh, take a notch higher. Let's level up the bar, which is uh, la passive for plus que parfait et futur anterior. Now, you all know that in this uh, textbook, we are doing the active voice and passive voice pretty seriously, right? So, here we have it for plus que parfait et futur anterior. So, uh, example, la petite Vincent avait été grondé par sa mère et elle pleurait. Of course, we know that part is used for, to convert from active to passive. And when you are converting to active to passive and vice versa, the position of the subjects get changed. And if the quantity and the gender of the subjects are different, then uh, of course, the subject verb agreement will take place, the verb conjugation will change. Uh, so there are many more changes that take place, right? Of course, we are going to discuss those changes in the questions and we have already discussed a couple of them. In fact, many of them in our previous videos. So what have we done for plus que parfait? Le plus que parfait passif is what? Le plus que parfait de l'auxiliaire être. Okay, we did the plus que parfait conjugation of the auxiliary verb être, which is what? Ave, été, ave, été, ave, été. Avion été, avier été, ave été. I know the pronunciation is same for majority of them, but the spellings are different. A V I S, A V A I S, A V I T, A V I O N S, A V I E Z, A V A I E N T. And then été we know is the same spelling as summer. Été. Both days with X O N Q. And then the past participle followed by a subject verb agreement. In this case. Of course, it will be there because we have et the, and whenever there is et the, undoubtedly we are to do the subject verb agreement. Quand tu auras été interrogé par le professeur, tu répondras. What have we done here for futur anterior? Le futur anterior passive, you can guess it, right? For plus que parfait, what was, this? What was it? Plus que parfait of uh, auxiliary verb et the, plus past participle here. It's futur anterior of the auxiliary verb et the. Plus the past participle, for we, for, so we know that at was auxiliary verb is what? Upward, right? And upward's conjugation of, uh, with the futur, uh, for futur anterior, we need to conjugate at the. So past participle and the auxiliary verb will be in futur sample, right? So we will conjugate it in, uh, for upward, A-U-R is the stem. So, j'aurai, tu aura, il aura, elle aura, nous aurons, vous aurez, ils sauront, elles sauront. And then we have ete, and then the past participles followed by subject verb agreement. Here it will be required in all cases. They have given an example. Plus que parfait, j'avais été interrogé. Nous avions été interrogé. Ils, elles avaient été interrogé. For interrogé, they are giving a e in the bracket indicating that subject verb agreement is possible. Right. <coughs> Similarly, for photo anterior. J'aurai été interrogé, uh, nous aurons été interrogé, vous aurez été interrogé, ils auront été interrogé, and uh, so on and so forth. So, I am just, uh, I just realized I didn't write anything on the board as of now. So, let me just quickly do it. Passive of plus que parfait is plus que parfait of être plus past participle. I am writing in short form. Okay. Followed by the subject, subject verb agreement if applicable. Passive of futur anterior will be futur anterior of uh, etre plus past participle followed by subject verb agreement if applicable. Uh, plus que parfait it's uh, subject plus uh, M parfait of auxiliary verb plus past participle of et de. It's what? Ete. 
right and photodontaria subject plus photo sample of auxiliary verb auxiliary verb of etra is what auxiliary verb of etra is avoir <coughs> so for imperfect the stem is uh, av and for the uh, this uh, photo uh, a sample scr so sare wait <laughs> we are not doing for it we are doing for avoir a u r yeah now it's fine so ave 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 avion ave uh, avie and ore ora 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 or ho or he or ho or ho right and uh, yeah that's it so let's move to the next topic in grammar uh, uh, that we have in hand to do to be discussed today this video is going to be slightly long because i think i am taking a bit extra time in discussion but it's good things should be clear properly right let me just quickly check because in the last video i remember that the camera angle got changed uh, pretty drastically and the video was looking quite weird wow 11 minutes already in this video is going to be long stay tuned Anyways, no issues at all. Plurie de non composé notion élémentaire. So now we are going to discuss the pluralization of uh, the composed nouns, as in that the, the nouns are comprised of two words. Now those can exist in numerous combinations. For example, call a non composed contia when the nouns composed of contain a non. A, an adjective, a noun and an adjective, or a noun, a noun, a noun and a noun. Les deux mots se mettent en général au plurier. So generally, in the, in these two cases, both the words will be converted to plural form. For example, un wagon, un restaurant, change to des wagons with an S and restaurant with an S. Similarly, the noun uni par une préposition. Two nouns. United with a preposition. Uh, la première non seul varie d'une pomme de terre, des pommes de terre. So in case there are two nouns which are united with a preposition, only the first one will get changed to plural, second one will remain the same. For example, potato, pomme de terre, the is the preposition, so pomme de terre, terre is not changing, the is of course preposition, it won't change. So pomme is getting an extra S. <coughs> A more invariable plus uh, uh, no a uh, noun that is not changeable plus a noun. For example, en général, le nom seul varie. The second word changes in such cases. For example, une avant-garde, des avant-garde. In des avant-garde, avant remains the same. It's invariable. Guard gets an S. A verb plus a noun. Un, un seul mot. La non varie en général a portmanteau, de portmanteau. Uh, so in this case, only the noun gets changed. For example, portmanteau changes to portmanteau with an X. We know it that the nouns or objects ending with EAU, they get an X at the end if they are converted to plural. Right. Uh, but uh, there's an exception. De port money. In de port money, you are having an e at the end, and then we have de chauffe ba. Okay. <coughs> this was the grammar that we have in the box, right? Now we have we have already discussed the passage much before. So exercises can el plurier. Now for that, I need to take my register. In this video, we are discussing the first two questions. Okay. I won't be writing the questions, I'll be simply writing the answers, okay? So, in the, uh, the question is divided into three parts, A, B and C. So, A is having two types of questions, either noun plus adjective or noun plus noun. And in these two cases, we are converting both of them into plural. Right. Next one is, 
one noun, uh, two nouns united with a preposition. So in this case, only the first noun is getting varied, right? And in the third one, we have a verb plus noun. So in the verb plus noun situation, only the noun gets in gets into plural form. Okay. Let's quickly do. Yun bas kur will uh, change to de bas kur. Both have got an S. A yun platform. Yun platform will change to de platform. Both are changed to plural. Then we have a supper from PA. Let me just write here so that I can utilize the full space. The un supper from PA, de supper from PA. Then we have an oiseau mouche. This was in such questions, uh, make sure that you convert the article as well. <clears throat> There's oazo. Oazo gets an X because it's ending with EAU. Please beware of that. Uh, don't just blindly add S everywhere because there are some rules as well. For example, cheval, C H E V A L, horse, that changes to C H E V A U X. Right. Journal, journal. Similarly. There's oazo. Mouche. <clears throat> then we have a metra nager. So de metra nager. Okay. Then we have a shia lu. De shia lu. This was the easiest. Either a noun and a noun or a noun and an adjective. Rather, uh, most of them were noun and a noun only. So, both got into plural form, right? <clears throat> then we have an uh, uh, even easier one. Uh, we have a preposition in between. So, the second word remains invariable. The first word is getting changed, right? <clears throat> so, we have an agent de police. Uh, des agents de police. Des agents de police. Okay. Uh, un verre à soi. De ver a soi. Un maître d'hôtel, de maître d'hôtel. Un garçon de café, de garçon de café. Un fer à cheval, de fer à cheval. Don't just make it de fer à chevaux. That will be wrong. <coughs> now we have a verb in the noun, and only the noun will get changed. Fine. C part. A port plume. De port plume. Yun fume cigarette, only cigarette will get an S. De fume cigarette. Smoking is injurious for health. Right. Uh, a couvre lit. De couvre lit. And lastly, we have an oeuvre. What? Oh, it's ouvre, sorry. An ouvre boîte, des ouvre boîte. Okay. So, with this, we complete question number one. But, a slight twist is there. Faites une courte phrase avec chacun de ces noms au plurier. <coughs> Make short sentences with all these plural nouns, I am not going to do that, okay? It's a subjective question. It's your creativity. Rather, what will be more fun? Here are the nouns. There's the comment section. You make some of them sentences, right? And I'll be taking a look at them. That will be more fun. Uh, like, it all depends on your creativity. What sort of sentences you guys can make. 
question number two is slightly long, so I need to erase the whole thing. If I rubbed it before you noted it down, uh, go back around 10 seconds and take a quick screenshot. Let's just rub it. I mean rubbing half both and then writing and then rubbing half both again, it's too time taking. Rubbing the whole thing at once, then writing the on the entire board. That's the thing. Passive a la form active. Okay, fine. So we have in the question passive and we need to change into active form. We can do it very well. So, j'avais été arrêté par une panne de voiture. We need to change to active. So, j'avais été arrêté par une panne de voiture. Une panne de voiture becomes the new subject. So, une panne de voiture. Now, je, we are to come with the je. Let's convert it to the reflexive pronoun. Yun pan de voiture mave arete. Okay. Yeah. Let me just quickly check if the recording is going on fine or not. And also, I need to look at the minutes that we have covered. <coughs> because this video is going to be a bit long. 21 already. Amazing. 30 minutes video, probably. Anyways, doesn't matter. As long as we are learning together, it's fine. Lorsque j'aurais été fatigué par une long route. Similar question. Lorsque une long route mora. Remember, it's full Ontario's uh, conjugation, right? <clears throat> oh, I didn't read the full question. There's this part as well. Je masquerai. Okay. Then we have if you have get a question like this, don't skip the second part. You need to write it, and even if it's not getting changed. La foire a été annoncée 15 jours à l'avance par la grande champette, uh, sorry, garde champette. So let's just convert it to this thing. La garde champette. Uh, Annonce. Okay, it's a été annonce. So it's passive composé is passive. Very easy. A annonce. <coughs> La foire. Quinze jours à l'avance. Right, uh, Matele Verb. Now, okay, we, have, we got these three uh, sentences, right? Sentence one, sentence two, sentence three. Okay, now the question is, uh, Mate. Uh, le verb au présent passif, <coughs> imparfait passif et passé composé passif, and similarly présent actif, imparfait actif, and passé composé actif. Let's just quickly do that. I am just taking with the subject, okay? Subject, that's in the question. In all the cases, we have, uh, first two we have je, and the third we have the subject la foi. So I'll be following this, okay? So first we have present passive, passé composé passive, and parfait passive. Okay? Let's just quickly do it. Present passive. Je suis arrêté. <coughs> Remember, I am taking the subject of the question, not of the answer. Okay? Je suis arrêté. Je suis fatigué. La foire est annoncée. Présent passif. Now, 
passive compose passive passive compose passive we have j at arete then uh, j at fatige and la foire third person singular a ete annonce with an extra e here also extra e because foire is feminine singular <coughs> empathy passive let us quickly do it so jete arete jete fatigue la foire ete annonce i guess imperfect passive i don't remember if we have discussed it or not imperfect passive with sim simply subject plus uh, imperfect of auxiliary verb at the plus the past participle followed by the subject verb element i'm not saying the word if applicable because it's required here and now i guess we have the opposite oh that's the easiest present active passive compose active and then passive active that's the simple conjugation that we have right so jarat jama fatigue and uh, should we change the subject here i mean i don't think so again i am assuming that the same subjects i am doing it with the same subjects okay i'm not doing it with the question as such so in the question we already have <coughs> the subject as la foire right so i'm doing it with la foire only not with, uh, with uh, since i do did in the first two also with je so i'm doing with la foire only okay the answer may vary i mean i'm assuming that it's it needs to be there on the basis of the question so la foire <coughs> Annonce is there, no? So annonce. Then we have passive compose active. Let's just quickly do it. J a r e t e. J a m a s u i f a t i g e And la f o i r e a annonce. and then we have jarete <clears throat> jama fatige and la foire and on c okay with this we are done with the first two questions in the next video we are going to do the remaining part so yeah stay tuned for today that's all for today if you like this video please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my youtube channel learn from chandan bhav and if you have any doubt or suggestion you may write that in the comment section below you may also like my facebook page by this name name learn from chandan bhav see you in my next video thanks for watching over the bhav nuclear park along from sizzle lamur